sheepishly sharing video, I showed you these pot holders. One was made by my mother-in-law several years ago, and she had difficulty explaining to me how to do it. So I went on a hunt for a pattern, and I could not find any patterns that explained it uh, clearly, so I kind of had to figure it out for myself. Later, I found that Teresa Crochet Geek had a video, and I did link you to that one. But she did hers a little bit differently from the way I did it, and you all said you wanted to see a tutorial. So, here it is. Many thanks to Virginia H. for sharing with me the pattern she uses, which is a blog tutorial. And it's much closer to what I did. I'm going to put this link and a link to several others, along with Teresa's video, in the description box so you can find the one you're most comfortable with. So first thing is your materials, and all you really need is any kind of cotton of your choice. I believe this is Lily Sugar and Cream. And I am using an H or 5 millimeter hook. Um, this is not important because gauge is not important. You're not trying to fit anything here. But uh, that's what I feel comfortable working with. So the first thing you want to do is chain 30. So start counting. 1, 2, 3, 27, 28, 29, 30. Okay, so you have a long chain of 30. Now, what you're going to do is, but our, our goal here is to crochet on this side. You see how you have your V of your crochet stitches? We're going to crochet down this side. So I guess we would call this the back loop only. And then we're going to come back around and crochet on the other side, making a circular type thing. So, just start in the second chain from the hook, which will be right here, and single crochet all the way down. Okay, we've gone all the way across with single crochet, and I'm down to the last stitch here. And what I'm going to do is put three in this one stitch. One, two, three. Our goal is to create a flat oval, a long flat oval. So I've kind of, this is where the slip knot was, so it's pulled a little wide, so I tightened it up there and tuck it behind out of the way, or I guess you could crochet over it. And now we are going to go into the next stitch with a single crochet. Okay, so you see how we have a nice rounded top. Alright, so I'm going to single crochet in this stitch that's left. It was actually the front loop of the long chain. And I'm going to go all the way down till I reach the other end. And let me show you what to do there. Wait, let me make sure I'm getting the right one. I've got that one, so I need to go in this one. So you can see how it's making a, an oval. And continue on and I'll meet you down at the other end. Okay, so I'm approaching the end with my single crochets. It's kind of tough to get in there. Alright, and you can see we've got one here and one here. Right here We're going to put two. There's one stitch. Now we're back in the same stitch. Two. Okay, now we're going to continue on. Now here's where you have some options. My mother-in-law did back loop only all the way through on hers. I chose to do no back loop only. I went through both. Let me show you the difference. You see the lines? Okay, that indicates the back loop only. 
and mine is a more um, smooth you just don't see any lines you just see a bunch of stitches I know it's a little bit tougher to see with this variegated yarn but um, that that's just keep that in mind decide what you want doesn't make any difference so what we're going to do now is we're going to continue to crochet single crochet with no increases at all one in every stitch all the way around so you're just going to be like a choo 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 and you just keep doing that around and around and around let me get some going and then I'll show you what to look for okay so I've been going for a little while and look how it's beginning to curl You see that more importantly look how it's beginning to bring the corners in see how the corners come in and that is what is going to create our fold we're going to continue going round and round and round and round until you get bigger and bigger corners that will meet that's the goal so let's do some more and we'll meet oh but wait a second you're probably thinking how many rows do I do Margaret that's the beauty of this you don't have to count it shows you you just check it every now and then by flattening it down and when the ed, when the middles come together you say oh I'm through and then you seam it up it's great wonderful mindless great TV watcher okay I've been crocheting like a crazy woman and I want to check and see how close I am to finishing so basically you just fold it down alright looks like I've got a couple more rounds to go and I want to stop on one of these ends and then we'll sew it closed so let me continue on okie dokie I'm checking again and it looks like we're here when you flatten it all down you can see that the pieces meet so here's what you do when you're on your last round all right, I've got a few more stitches to meet right here. Let's see, I've got one here. I'm eyeballing all of this. I didn't count any of it. And that is the beauty of this pattern. All right, so am I at the very end? No, I want to do two more stitches to get this corner in, to get in the corner. One, two okay now I'm going to share a link with you to a the best um, pattern on the blog on a blog that I have seen shared with me by Virginia and it does not include one of these holders right here now I don't hang mine up I throw them in a drawer but for some reason I just feel like pot holders are supposed to have holders little hooks I mean little loops that you can hang on a hook so I'm gonna add that so I think we'll do about eight chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And now we're just going to hook it over here on the next stitch. I'll slip stitch it in. If I can catch it. There we go. Alright, so now we have a hook and now we need to sew these together now of course you're going to want to use your matching yarn so cut yourself off a good bit of it maybe two three maybe four lengths just to be on the safe side much better to have a little more than not enough and then let's talk about sewing it together and you'll want to go ahead and pull it all the way through all right, now let's put that out of the side, out of the way for a minute because I've seen in another video a different way to sew it together <clears throat> using the whip stitch, and I don't really care for that. And I'll show you why. Although it is a very sturdy stitch, so depending on how rough you are with your pot holders, you may want to consider that. But I'm going to use this contrasting yarn scrap yarn to kind of show you why okay what the instructions were was to go through the entire stitch let's see if I can get closer you go through the entire stitch and then directly across go through the entire stitch 
And for the whip stitch, you come back to the exact side you started on, which would be this side, and you do it again. If I can get it without splitting. And then see, so you pull it closed. Now, of course, this would be in the matching yarn. You do not want to do this in the contrasting yarn. But I'm doing it just so I can show you the nature of this stitch. You see how you have these diagonal lines that go across? Not nearly as noticeable when you use the right yarn. But I still was not fond of that stitch. So let me show you what I found. And I'm still going to use the white so you can get the idea of why I chose this stitch. Now, you can see that the top stitch is sort of turning itself under. It's rolling under. So I have to turn it up to let you see both stitches, right? You with me on that? Okay, what I'm going to do is leave this one undone. I'm just not going to touch it. We're going to use only the outside portion of each of these stitches. Okay, just these outside portions. So, of course, when we really do it, we'll do it with the red. But I want you to kind of see the difference, so I'm still using the white. Now, instead of going back around to this side, I'm going to pick up this one right here. Well, I should have gone through both at the same time, wouldn't I? That would have been more efficient. And then I go back on this side and pick up this one. So I'm kind of having a serpentine or S pattern going here. Now, the best part about this is when you pull it tightly, the stitches tuck in so much better. So you can't see them. They're kind of woven down in there. And also, you get more of a, I don't know, even closure, I guess you could say. Because you're doing just one V from each side and pulling it in to make a single V. You got it? You see what I'm saying? So that's what I'm going... That's, that's the closure that I prefer, but I'm going to encourage you to look at other closures to see which one you prefer. I'll get this out, and we'll load up the needle with the proper yarn. Okay, so when we last left off, we had um, pulled through. All right, we cut our yarn and pull it through. So now I'm going to actually reach over. I want the stitch to come over here for its closure. So I'm going to start on this side. And I'll do that same kind of serpentine weave. Or serpentine if you prefer that pronunciation. And I'm going to go back and forth just like I showed you. I'm trying to use my... This is my right hand which is my dominant hand. It's hard enough to keep from splitting the yarn, but then I'm using my left hand so you can still see what I'm doing. Now, see how it sort of just completely disappears? Now, you can't help the fact that you're going to have a very visible seam on this side. But you can kind of minimize your seam with this technique. And just go back and forth until you get to the end and weave your ends in. Okay, I've done this last stitch right here. There's really one more you have to catch. Right there. Now, here is, you know, just weave it in any kind of way you're comfortable with. I've recently learned someone taught a, um, well, let me go through here and show you. Someone taught that a better secure way is to slide it through under some stitches and then to actually, on purpose, split 
some yarn and it grabs on better. It's a little tricky when you're working with the tripod, kind of gets in your way. But you sew it in any way you want to. I'm probably just going to go right and just weave it on in as much underneath as I can get just to keep it from showing. Okay, get like this. I pull it really tight to where it kind of gathers. All right, so I pull it really tight, give it a snip, and then straighten it out. And there you have your finished pot holder. Nice and square with your diagonal seams. Oh, I forgot. You have to sew that beginning end in, too. But there you go.